Hey, Summit Daily viewers, Antonio Olivero, sports and outdoors editor with the Summit Daily News, coming at you today high at the top of U Pass Road. As you can see here on the border of Summit and Grand Counties, way up to the north, uh, headed toward Heaney and Green Mountain Reservoir. We're going to be headed back toward Silverthorne here in the Williams Fork Mountains as we scale up toward you peak some of the Ute peak starting at about 9500 feet we're going to access it via again the top of Ute pass here here are some more trail signs should gain about 3,000 feet as we head up we'll check in with you once we get into the forest here a little bit all right so we're about 11 minutes into the hike a bit of an ascent to start over the per first 0.4 just under 0.5 miles gain just under 300 feet as you come to this outlook over the Gore Range, just an immaculate view here. Not too far from Ute Pass, on top of Ute Pass Road. This will be the final overlook, or outlook, as we continue up the single track trail for quite a while. After that first ascent, like I said, gaining to this point maybe 300 feet, we're gonna head back into the forest for a couple miles. The trail's gonna flatten out and uh, we won't be able to see the Gore Range quite like this for at least a couple more miles until we start ascending hard up kind of the backside of Ute Peak. All right, well, I fibbed a little bit. We kept gaining elevation, not as steeply, but uh, some pretty steady gain now over the first 1.1 miles of the hike. For what it's worth, uh, through a hike like this, a little bit more remote, a little bit less traveled, this trail uh, has had its share of blowdown uh, trees uh, from a winter or just storms kind of uh, blown down over the trail. So just be ready to navigate some of that stuff. But like I said, 1.1 miles in, gained I'd say just under 700 feet, as it seems like we're gonna dip down a little bit here, continuing along the trail. So as we're about 1.8 miles into the hike, it's flattened out and even decreased a little bit. The uh, grade, uh, you can see straight ahead, lingering smoke and fire from the uh, the fire here in the Williams Fork and the smoke kind of lingering down there in the valley uh, to the left of the trail as we continue to hike. All right, so we're about 2.1 miles into this hike. It's taken us about 45 minutes. Like I said, we've gained between 700 and 800 feet. We just came to like a creek crossing, pretty, pretty clear creek crossing, at which we bear to the left to continue on the trail. The, uh, the clear trail, as you'll see after you cross the creek, uh, kind of going up along toward Ute Peak. But I will say, if you look at your map, there does seem to be like a little shortcut and a faint, very, very faint trail in the, uh, in the ground below that breaks off kind of straight ahead and to the right after you cross that creek. When we crossed the creek, uh, there were a couple hunters there, uh, happy hunting season, who um, were uh, just kind of refilling some of their water and, um, you know, we, we both kind of mutually agreed that in terms of continuing up toward Ute Peak, it's probably best, even if it's a little bit more out of the way, continuing that left on this obvious trail, as you can see, continuing on this trail. So you may look at your map and you may see some trails on a printed out map or on a um, kind of a topographic app that you might have and think, well, maybe I'll take the shortcut. If you do, um, it'll, it'll gain quickly and steeply. And the one thing uh, myself and the hunters are talking about was the amount of blowdown probably on that trail. There's already quite a bit on this trail, um, would probably be difficult to climb through. So we can, we've decided to continue along, um, the trail proper, kind of the obvious trail breaking left at the Creek. It's been pretty flat so far and I'll check in with you in a bit. Okay. Just under 2.5, I'd say it's closer to 2.5 than 2.4 miles into our hike from Ute Pass along the Ute Pass Trail N31. We come to the junction with this trail heading up the hill at right, um, Ute Peak Trail N24, which is going to lead up to Ute Peak. So we're gonna bear right here and begin to climb. From here on out, the ascension is going to kick our butts. Uh, but we gotta get above tree line and about maybe seven, 800 feet of gain into the hike. We still have, I'd say about 2000 feet to go. Whew. We're just under 11,000 feet as the uh, space in between the trees starts to open up. We start to get our first glimpse of the U Peak Ridge line up ahead. 
man, just under four miles into this hike, once you reach that junction, it's uh, the ascent just punches you right in the mouth. We've gained, I'd say, just under 1,900 feet, just under four miles into the hike, and uh, we still have probably about a mile and a half to go and, and some steep climbing up ahead as we get this little reprieve on this single track trail. Looks like we're gonna dip a little bit down to like a little coal in between kind of two high points on this ridge line, and then we're gonna ascend probably another 500, maybe a little bit more feet until we break through tree line and uh, continue scaling probably the last mile or so uh, through the alpine vegetation and the uh, and the talus over the uh, couple fall summits and then the summit of Ute Peak. And I will note the one thing that makes this Ute Peak hike daunting even though the ultimate summit elevation doesn't seem that intense and uh, you know when you look at the topographic lines it doesn't seem like that much of a gain. We've lost about 500 feet of elevation to this point and like I said we've gained about 1900 so you do the math it leaves quite a bit of elevation gain probably around 1300 left so I was fibbing before I think when I was giving you those numbers down by the trail just because it skipped my mind that yeah we've lost 400 to 500 feet so it makes returning that much more difficult and it makes the ascent that much more grueling. We finally peeked through tree line four and three quarter miles into this hike. The ascent has been pretty unrelenting outside of that coal I last checked in with you at all the way up. Uh, as we reach tree line there's this rock pile here that signifies we're going to hang a left up here and continue up through the alpine vegetation. Uh, we're at about 11,700 feet. We have about one mile left to reach the true summit of Ute Peak, which should see about 600 to 700 feet of elevation gain. Whew. For what it's worth, Ute Peak, even though it doesn't reside as high at just over 12,000 feet as some other impressive mountains here in Summit County, I was gonna take a little break here. Um, because of kind of where it resides relative to the sun, um, even though it might look like there's no snow on top of the oblong, relatively flat looking above treeline summit from Highway 9 down below. As you hike up from this direction, uh, early in season there can be lingering snow patches. Last summer, in our big snow summer, I hiked it in early July. And all through that portion, canopied by trees I just came through, and then through here, was hiking through snow. So just be cognizant of that after snowstorms early in season, you know, June, July, also late in season, late September, October, November. Uh, so sharing that for what it's worth. We'll see you once we get a little bit more of a 360 degree view up ahead. Shortly after I left you guys, the views to the north and a little bit toward the west there as we're looking toward Heaney and Green Mountain Reservoir to the left of Williams Fork Mountain, further down the ridgeline to the north, and then looking to the east toward Grand County. As uh, these views open up, so pan back around a little bit more, uh, we've kind of reached the end of this faint single track trail here, at least at, to this point, and I see this cairn here, and then I spot another cairn kind of straight up through the alpine vegetation it seems, so I'm gonna take that as a hint and, uh, and continue. It looks like there's a faint trail here, so I'm gonna continue to hike up this trail and see if it curls back around to that that cairn. As you hike through here, just be careful. Try to keep the faint trail and, um, you know, be sure to hike with enough awareness that you're able to retrace your steps if for whatever reason you get a little bit lost. As we are now above 11,800 feet, just want to make it clear, you can see the faint trail continues after I last left you off. We did hang to the right and spotted some cairns up ahead. The cairns are easy to spot now that the snowpack's not here. Here's another one. And as we look up at the Bluebird Sky and the UP Peak Ridgeline, the faint trail continues up ahead. As you can see, kind of where my boots are. And uh, it's right about here, the view's just stunning. Something straight out of a movie of the Gore Range to the west open up. It's just unbelievable and the Blue River Valley and the ranch land stunning in the foreground and then the mighty 
jagged, monstrous gore range just beyond. We're now at about 12,100 feet. At right is the false summit of Ute Peak, just a bit shorter than that uh, peak at left. Uh, last time I hiked up here, uh, last early July, just hiked to this one false summit up ahead, which you can ascend. We're gonna skirt on the trail at right, so we are not gonna climb up there as we're trying to reach the true summit, which you can see at left. About 200, maybe 300 more feet of elevation gain to go. Wow, this is why we do what we do. This is why we hike. This is why those 3,000 feet of gain punches you straight in the face is worth it as you get these 360 degree views back toward civilization in Summit County to the south. You can see Peak One and the 10 mile range and even some slides on Copper Mountain, Buffalo Mountain, the rest of the Gore Range, and then the super impressive view of U Peak straight ahead. And then this ridge line that come, you know, conditions where it's a little bit colder, a little bit wetter, a little bit more snow, big snow year. This is all just a cornice. Last time I hiked up here, just snow lingering as you see one last snow patch right there, hanging on for dear lives. So continuing on up, Ute Peak may not look that impressive from Colorado Highway 9, but once you're up here on this single track, one of the coolest mountains to hike in the county. Especially considering, you know, today's the Saturday of Labor Day. I think I've seen maybe a half dozen people on the totality of this trail, including those two hunters. And since I've been above treeline, not a soul. Imagine all those crowds on Quandry and some of the other popular trails and mountains. You peak, Summit County Gym. See you on the summit. All right. Just under about 3,200 feet of gain. 5.9 miles into the hike. If you're hiking this, this is looking like a 12 mile round trip from you pass. We are approaching the summit finally. Oh, we'll uh, stick with you for these last few steps to get up to the true summit of UP. Oh, what a hike. What a hike. Here we go. 360 to reviews. I'll check in with you after I flip the camera. And now she blows. The beautiful Williams Fork Ridgeline jutting over to Ptarmigan Peak, which you can see at right. To get to the summit of Ute Peak, you come a little bit off of the single track trail down below. Just impressive 360 degree views of the Gore Range. See Colorado Highway 9 and the ranches in the Blue River down below. This area where that one little patch of snow is still lingering. Good thing we got more coming on Tuesday. Pan around to the Grand County area, looking east toward the Front Range of Colorado, Denver, and the Flatland behind the horizon line. And then Grays and Tories in the distance straight ahead. If you can spot those two twin peaks. To recap this hike, we're looking at about 3,100 to 3,200 feet of elevation gain to get here to the summit. We found it took about 5.9 miles as we head back down. It took us about two hours and 45 minutes. and hoping it takes closer to two to get back down the mountain. Well, I will say, as we take these expansive views, 360 degrees, um, with losing about 400 feet of elevation means we're gonna have to gain that back. Might not gain as much time going back down uh, from Ute Peak to Ute Pass as we otherwise would on some hikes. 